Hey guys, quick back to basics here. Let's talk about pH meter. The pH meter has two electrodes, the reference electrode and the glass electrode. Both the electrodes, the reference electrode and the glass electrodes are made up of silver wire coated with silver chloride. The silver metal present in electrode can lose an electron and form silver ion. This reaction is a reversible reaction, which means the silver ion can also accept an electron to form metallic silver. The second reaction that occurs on the pH electrode is the reaction between chloride and silver ion to form silver chloride. This is again a reversible reaction. The reference electrode is filled with a saturated solution of potassium chloride whereas the glass electrode is filled with 0.1 molar HCl. The end of glass electrode has a bulb-like structure made up of thin glass. The glass is made up of silica. This glass is designed in such a way that the oxygen molecules attached with silica remains outside from both the sides. The inner side of the glass bulb as well as the outer side has the negatively charged oxygen atoms. These oxygen atoms are arranged in such a way that they specifically binds H plus ions from both the sides. When H plus ions binds negatively charged oxygen atoms, they create a layer which we call hydrated gel layer. The hydrated gel layer is present on both the sides of the glass bulb. Always remember, the H plus ions cannot cross the glass of the electrode. They can only bind at its surface. The hydrated gel layer on both the sides is usually 10 nanometers thick whereas the thin glass of the glass bulb is 0.1 mm thick. The glass electrode function as a half cell. This glass electrode is connected with the reference electrode. The potential generated by the reference electrode is always constant. The reference electrode also has a porous ceramic plug that allows diffusion of ions and completing the circuit. Now, instead of having two separate electrodes, most of the modern day pH meters have a glass electrode and a reference electrode arranged together. Ok, now let's see how the glass electrode measures the pH of the solution. When the solution is acidic, there are more number of H plus ions in the solution. As a result, there will be more number of H plus ions on the outer layer. Hence, the region outside the glass electrode is more positive. The inner layer has less number of H plus ions. As a result, the inner layer is less positive with respect to outer layer. Now, to balance out the differences in the net charge, the H plus ions which are present in the inner solution starts binding the inner layer of the glass electrode. As a result, the concentration of free H plus ions in the solution of glass electrode decreases by slight amount. Remember, the total number of H plus ions inside the solution of glass electrodes is constant. In other words, pH inside the glass electrode is constant. But because the H plus ions binds the inner layer of the glass electrode, the amount of free H plus ions in the inner solution decreases. Now, as the number of free H plus ions has decreased, 
the number of Cl- ions in the solution will be more. In order to balance out the chloride ions, the silver metal of the silver electrode loses its electron to form silver ions. These silver ions react with chloride ions to form silver chloride. Now, as the silver wire is conducting metal, these electrons will give rise to electric current and will change the potential of the glass electrode. This change in potential of the glass electrode is measured with respect to the reference electrode. Okay, now let's understand the situation where the outer solution is alkaline. In this case, the number of H plus ions in the outer solution will be very less. As a result, there are less number of H plus ions on the outer layer of the electrode. Hence, the region outside the glass electrode is less positive. The inner layer of the electrode has more number of H plus ions. As a result, the inner layer is more positive with respect to outer layer. Now, to balance out the difference in the net charge, the H plus ions which are present on the inner layer are released in the inner solution. As a result, the concentration of free H plus ions in the solution of the glass electrode increases. As the concentration of H plus ions in the solution of glass electrode is more, the Cl minus ions are comparatively less. Now, because of deficiency of Cl minus ions, the silver chloride disassociates itself into Ag plus and Cl minus ions. The chloride ions released from silver chloride will balance out the extra H plus ions in the solution. However, since silver chloride has been disassociated, we have more number of Ag plus ions. The extra Ag plus ions moves to the silver electrode and gains electron to form metallic silver. As the electrode is giving electrons to the Ag plus ions, the potential of the electrode again changes. This change in potential is measured with respect to the reference electrode. Thus, to summarize, the concentration of H plus ions in the outer solution affects the binding of H plus ions on the inner hydration layer of the electrode. This binding or release of H plus ions on the inner hydration layer affects the oxidation or reduction of silver ions on the electrode. The oxidation or reduction of silver ions causes electrons to be either gained or lost by the electrode. This in turn changes the voltage of the electrode. Now, for accurate measurements of pH, the pH meter must be calibrated. For this, we use buffers with known pH. Usually, buffers having pH 4, pH 7, and pH 10 are used. For calibration, the pH probe is kept in the buffer and the potential difference across the electrodes is measured. We then tell the microchip of the pH meter to register this potential difference for the corresponding pH. This is done for each buffers with known pH. We tell the microchip to register the potential difference with known pH values. Once calibrated, the pH meter can be used to calculate the pH of unknown solutions.